When you start making a horror game in Godot, one of the first questions that come up is how do you properly set up the environment and whiting? The usual workflow when you're creating a level is to click on these three dots and then select add environment and then sun. This setup is objectively not scary. So let me walk you through some steps that you can take to turn this level a bit more spooky. The first obvious step would be to get rid of the directional light, but toggling its visibility turns it off just the same. This doesn't make our scene dark though, because a lot of the light in the level comes from the sky, which is an attribute in the world environment. To get access to it, we'll have to click on the environment resource and go into the sky section. Open up the procedural sky material, and what we're going to do here is change the color of the sky in order to change the amount of ambient light that gets added into the game environment. So if we change our sky top color, the environment already gets a little darker, but we can actually take it further by also changing the horizon color for the sky and then the bottom color and the horizon color for the ground. So now that our scene is actually dark, let's quickly pop into our player character scene and add a flashlight. To do that, we'll add a new node to be a child of our camera, and this is important because we want the flashlight to follow the camera movement. So search for Spotlight 3D, and once it's added, make sure that it's facing the same way as our camera. The important settings for Spotlight 3D are in the poetically named Spot and Light sections. Let's pop into the game while we mess around with these settings so we can see changes in real time. First up is range, which is pretty self-explanatory. This is how far the light reaches, and we're gonna set it to 100 units. Then attenuation is how fast the light falls off within that range, so a higher value will mean that less light reaches that advertised 100 unit range. Angle is just how wide the light cone is, and we're gonna keep it at 45 degrees. And then angle attenuation is how much of the light is concentrated towards the center of the light cone. So higher angle attenuation will give softer light on the edges. I like to keep this at 3, but obviously play around with this to see how you feel. As for the light setting, let's change the light color to something a bit more yellowish to make it easier on the eyes, and then change the energy multiplier to 4 to make the light brighter. Finally, I found that once we add fog, having the volumetric fog energy up to 1 leads to some unpleasant light artifacts, so we're going to set that to 0.1. Now that we finally got a source of light, let's take this a step further and make it a full-on horror environment. We're going to do this by going back to the level scene and opening up the world environment settings. Same deal, looking at this while inside of the game, we are first going to change the tone mapping. What tone mapping does is it converts the high range of colors that the engine is dealing with into something that can be displayed on a normal monitor. And there's a bunch of different algorithms for that. Filmic is the default for Godot, and if you want a brighter scene, you can use Reinhardt, but the one that we're gonna use, Aces, gives way better colors in my opinion, and is the industry standard at this point. As a nice side effect, it also makes the scene darker, a little too dark as a matter of fact, so that takes us to our next step. We're going to go into the adjustments section, and once we tick enabled here, we can find two settings that you always see the second you open any horror game for the first time, brightness and contrast. It's always a good idea to allow players to fine tune these settings because every monitor is different. Here, our scene is a little too dark, so we can crank up the brightness to 1.3. Next is SDFGI, and this is usually a no-brainer because it makes lighting more realistic, especially once we add more light sources. So just turn it on. No need to change any settings, the default ones are good. After that, we can pop into the volumetric fog section, set it to enabled, and we can keep the fog density at 0.05, but to make it a bit more visible, we want to change its emission color to something like a dark red, which obviously makes it a little too bright, but we can counteract that by lowering the emission energy to 0.1. It's still a little bright after that, so let's change the albedo color of the fog to gray. Finally, to make the trees in the distance have a softer color, we're going to increase the fog length to 128 and that's a wrap if you enjoyed the video leave a like because that helps a great deal and as always all of the project files are available on my patreon and the link in the description if you have any other cool ways to make the environment even spookier definitely share them in the comments because me and other people always appreciate some extra tips see you next time